Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for March 28th, 2022. Well, as we wind down this quarter, we may have a challenging week ahead. So how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and you're ready to dig in for another week of trading. Let's take a look at these index charts, see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market today. And let's take a look at some of those things that could be affecting us this week that may put a little bit of challenge or wrinkle into the potential market. Let's take a look first here at the diamonds. As you can see, Diamonds has done a quite a quite a good job here. As a matter of fact, what I wrote in the blog this excuse me, what I wrote in the blog this morning was a um, vastly improved technical picture in the charts because we've broken that downtrend and we and so far we have successfully held a higher low of support and we're trying to push on higher. Now futures last night started out down and they have um, improved dramatically here um since the overnight lows trying to push up and we're seeing that just about every single day um in the market where we just pump up the futures in the pre-market pump them up pump them up pump them up and then unfortunately we almost immediately get selling as soon as the market opens so <laughs> keep an eye on that carefully they're still trying to draw in just absolutely as much as they can but one of the things i want to point out to you is just how low a volume we have been rallying on. So there is a little bit of a concern here that we're running out of energy um, as we continue to push up and test these resistance levels in the chart. So keep in mind, those bulls have some work to do if we're going to push through these levels and um, get things done. And there is a possibility they can do that. One of the factors that tends to happen around the end of a quarter is what's called end of quarter window dressing. And what does that mean? Well, usually what people are referring referring to is the fact that um, all of the all of the businesses out there that have 401k plans and those folks that have mutual funds and things like that all of that money c comes in you know and um, institutions have to put it to work so if they start putting a great big new pile of money to work in the markets that usually means an upside possibility so we do want to watch for that possibility that they could push through to the upside so we'll watch that closely but if you take a look on the other hand we have some issues out there that are starting to create some concern and that would be a yield curve and a yield curve inversion that could trigger a risk off scenario in the market and Unfortunately, when that risk-off scenario kicks in, it, it's almost an automatic thing. It's an algorithm in the computer that starts a selling process um, in the market if that yield cur curve continues to invert. Now, the reason that is the case is because we have an awful lot of worry about a potential recession. So you're going to want to keep a close eye on that yield curve today and throughout this week with a very challenging week on the economic calendar of market moving data. So we've got a lot on our plate this week that could move us around um, substantially. So be prepared for quite a little bit of volatility. Watch for head fakes, watch for um, overnight reversals, and watch for those intraday whipsaws that could be pretty challenging as this data rolls out. So let's take a look here. If those bulls can get moving here, we'll want to watch and see if they can pop up through that resistance to the upside and I think there is a chance that they could do that if those bears were to um, re-engage um, with some you know some negative news then um, we do want to watch for that possibility that we could break the support levels here in the chart let's take a look at the spy really quickly SPY very similar situation um, we had a great technical improvement in the chart holding the higher low here breaking that downtrend so that is a bullish signal for the market once again we still have those same problems out there with quite a little bit of price resistance in the chart that is still challenging 
challenging us as we push on higher. So watch that carefully. So if those bulls can get engaged, watch these price levels above. And if the bears happen to find reason to get engaged, we'll want to watch this support level here. That'll be pretty critical. Um, a failure there could be a problem for the overall market psychologically. And then let's take a look at our QQQ. Very similar here on the QQQ, but Qs have had a little bit more challenge, it seems, than others. Even though we had a big surge in, in the tech giants last week, um, they probably are a little bit overextended in the short term. Can they continue to push them to the upside? Well, we'll have to watch, wait, and see here today. But if we were to draw a nice straight line across here, you see we've got quite a little bit of price resistance that we're dealing with in that chart. And if we can push through that, I want you to notice that we have another layer in there, not much higher in that chart. But the good news is we have broken that downtrend and we have at this point, we've pushed through some resistance levels in the chart and we have held those. So if those bulls can stay engaged, watch these levels above. And if those bears happen to re-engage and come back, then watch for some uh, price support in here. And if we start losing some of those levels again, that can be a little bit of a problem for the market. And then last but not least is the Russell. And the Russell, I got to tell you, is kind of a, well, it's, it's very interesting. They're trying really hard to hold this bullish, trying really hard to hold this up in here and hold that higher low in the chart. But when you look above here, oh my goodness, there is just a massive wall of price resistance above. Now that doesn't mean they can't push through it. Um, but we'll want to watch that pretty closely because if we were to um, push through, then uh, hey, then there may be some more upside here in the market. But if we were to fail, and I kind of lean toward that side with the threat of, of um, yeah, recession and all of these issues out there, but we could temporarily push through. So watch that closely here in the chart. This is quite a level here. Um, we're going to need something special, I think, to push us up through that and get us moving. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now, our VIX has been kind of interesting. Um, it's been up during the day and then down right at the end of the day. So um, what we've seen in the last few days, just right at the end of the day, about more volume has come in in the last five minutes of the day than we have seen throughout the entire day. Um, in the market, we've been pretty low on that volume and then it surges right at the end of the day with that dark pool activity being consolidated to the market. So we've had that VIX shoot up a couple of times here. As you can see, we uh, push up and then push uh, push it back down and push up and push back down right at the end of the day. Now that's improved things quite a little bit, but it also puts us in that little bit of an uncomfortable situation here in the market as that volume continues to show weakness. Now we'll want to watch this carefully as we approach this area right in here around the 20 level. That's a pretty substantial level of price support throughout the chart. So watch that carefully. If those bears were to re-engage, they could re-engage any time in the this market. Remember, we've rallied a long ways really fast, and that puts in that possibility that those bears could fight back at price resistance. So watch some of these levels here in the chart. But for now, we've got to say the bulls are in control, but we want to watch for that potential reversal. Let's take a look at our um, T2122. And T2122 does give us that concern of that potential reversal. As you know, we pushed up here pretty high and pretty elevated last week. And then we did get that little bit of relief and pulled us back. But let's take a look right in here how our T2122 continues to show us a bit of a overbought condition here in the market. Now, we still have, in saying that, we still have some upside potential. There's no reason to believe why we can't find, if we've got some bullishness or bullish news that comes in, find some upside potential here in the market. We'll want to watch that pretty closely, but we'll also want to be considering that possibility that we don't have a big um, area of upside movement 
um, before we reach a extremely overbought condition. So keep that in mind. Now, on the same token, if those bears find reason to engage, we have a pretty big downside potential should they really find something to grab a hold of. So we'll want to watch that closely. Now keep in mind, we can stay up here. We can hang out in this upper area for a while. But eventually, we always tend to push back down to fill that downside move. So just watch those uh, areas closely. Can we get enough window dressing to keep us pumping up into the end of the quarter? Maybe. Or will we see that yield cur curve inversion really start to pick up on that fear of recession pushing us back down? Hard to know, but let's keep a close eye on that price action. Let's take a close look at um, our T2108. Now, T2108 had an improvement on Friday, but I want you to notice that even though we improved on Friday, we didn't quite break that high of um, before. So a little bit of, um, you know, it, it's exciting to see that improvement, but maybe not quite enough to get us really cranked up that we're ready to bust through to that upside. Let's keep in mind, we still have this downtrend in play here in the chart, but we have broken the shorter term um, downtrend, pushing back up and we're still holding those price support levels. So fingers crossed that those bulls will have enough energy to push us through. And if we have T2107, um, we'll also see that we had that marginal improvement again on Friday, right at the end of the day. And I mean, right in the last five minutes of the day where that improvement really came in. And we're still challenged by that downtrend. We still have price resistance to worry about, but at the same time, we're holding on to some price support so kind of that double-edged sword can we push on through here in t2107 or t2101 i'm not sure t2101 is helping us out in any um anything here today be, or lately and that's just simply because our volume has been so extremely low it's really difficult to find momentum when our volume is so so um, anemic so watch that carefully let's take a look at our economic calendar for today now our economic calendar this week is extremely bit busy but today we have a couple of things we'll want to be paying attention to first off we have international trading goods here this morning and this is one thing that really points to the complications of potential um, inflation or recession in that we have been absolutely ignoring our international trading goods numbers that continue to show a widening deficit, as a matter of fact, record deficits in our trade numbers. So we've ignored that for a long, long time. Will we finally start paying attention to it um, with a risk of, of recession coming along? Um, I don't know, so watch that closely here this morning. Then the other thing I think we may want to keep an eye on um, are two-year bond auction. Two-year bonds um, surged um, eight basis points um, overnight. We saw the five and 10-year invert. Um, and so that two and 10 year are in that position of inversion as well. So this bond auction could be kind of interesting today at 11.30 a.m. We we'll might, might want to keep an eye on that here today. Then as we progress through the week, we've got those Case Shiller, we've got Consumer Confidence, we've got the Job Openings Report, we've got ADP, a GDP number to keep us um, pretty um, on, on our toes and uh, wondering what comes next. And then if we look uh, through the rest of the week, you know, our normal jobless claims, personal incomes and outlays will be in there um, as well. And then if we look here at the end of the week, the, the big number of the end of the week, um, employment situation report, PMI manufacturing, ISM manufacturing, and construction spending. So we have a big week of economic data that could certainly move us around substantially. So keep a close eye on those um, numbers as they come into play. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar for today. Now, interestingly enough, we have a pretty, <laughs> we have quite a few um, stocks listed on the economic or earnings calendar, but we have the vast majority of them that are listed unconfirmed reports. And if we take a look, uh, 30 or so, uh, you know, 
potential reports out there that could be coming along. But um, let's take a look. There's not too many that would really be considered particularly notable. Let's take a look. We have AND that will AND that well for Pete's sake maybe I've got a ticker wrong here I'll have to check that guys um, um, P-L-A-Y P-L-A-Y Dave and Buster's will be reporting today not exactly um, one of those um, market movers um, but certainly something to pay attention to particularly if you're um, holding that stock um, if we take a look JEF um, Jeffries Financial maybe one of the more notables today let's keep a close eye on that um, Jeffries has certainly been in a downtrend here this could be important notice that we've got a little bit of a wedging pattern maybe possibly coming in with a higher low but lower highs so watch that carefully could be a very important report today uh, TPG um, again um, we're running scraping the bottom of the barrel looking for notables I'm not exactly sure this is going to be one of those that's going to move us around a whole lot AVAH is on that list today again little cheapy guy moving in a downtrend but trying to pick up um, some higher lows here recently so this earnings report could be pretty important for it and bitf um, is another looks like we're getting a little pop and drop in the pre-market here um, so watch that closely and xpef is the last one i had on whoops um last one i had on the calendar and i think a couple of these are even pink sheet um so we're just not getting um we're just not getting um that many reports that are really going to move us around so kind of keep that in mind it's going to be more focused to that um, earnings calendar for the day let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that guys if you could do me a favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video and if you find these videos to be worthy and helpful if you can please continue to click those thumbs up buttons leave that brief comment you guys are so kind you keep doing that day after day and I truly truly appreciate it thank you so much much um, for all your help and support and we're getting close um, we've got about a hundred more subscribers and we're gonna break that 27,000 um, level um, in the market so we're on our way to 30,000 and it really is um, a true credit to you guys for um, all of your kind support to the channel that makes that happen and thank you so much for that and those folks that continue to support uh, the channel through buy me a coffee I'm going to try and get another live event set up here soon so be watching for those notifications let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up but please keep in mind guys as we do that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact I would really recommend that that you focus in on your rules and your tolerance to risk before you take a look at any potential trade realizing that the market is quite volatile and anything is possible so these are not recommendations and I want you to make sure that you're following your own trading rules and you should never ever follow anyone else's trade idea unless it fits your trading style let's take a look at a couple here that I have been paying attention to um, CRM I like this pattern here in CRM now we'll notice here um, that it's just trying to drag that 50-day moving average out this is what we call a rounded bottom breakout pattern where our short-term moving averages are pushing up providing some support in here around that 50-day and notice that we've rallied up and I really like this lighter consolidation in here that's how we start to move up out of a bottom um, on stock so I'm watching CRM as a matter of fact I've placed a price alert on that chart and I'm watching for that potential that we can move on through and maybe challenge the next level of price resistance so keep an eye on Salesforce PayPal is in that same place you can see I've placed a price alert here on the chart this has been in a sharp downtrend here recently so I don't want to hold my breath thinking this is just gonna rip back to the upside uh, 
Um, as a matter of fact, if I use this area here for trend, it may suggest that there's several more days of consolidation that has to occur in here. So I've placed an alert. I'm waiting for that trade. We'll see if there's an opportunity here for that coming soon. But PayPal trying to come back around. In that same kind of area, take a look at SQ. And I've mentioned SQ a couple of times before. And it is also resting out here toward this trend. Now you could decide uh, the trend's not there, the trend is here. And that may very well be true. Um, so watch that closely. I'm not saying that my, and by the way, I get a lot of questions when I draw lines on charts and things like that, all of these support and resistance levels. People try to copy those. Please keep in mind, guys, that um, oftentimes I'm drawing those very, very quickly. Um, I have spent 30 years um, working on support resistance and trend in the charts. What I see may be different than what you see in a chart. So always keep that in mind. But SQ to me seems to be in that same pattern where we're trying to set up. Notice that we're up above our 50 day moving average. That's that rounded bottom type pattern. Our shorter term averages crossing up to provide some support in here. So there is that potential we could start moving through to the upside. So keep a close eye on that. You know, I've had a lot of folks asking about AMD, and AMD is in that same kind of uh, pattern here, trying to break that downtrend, pushing up and trying to make that little higher low here in the chart. And I had a price alert on this chart, um, and you can see last week that triggered here in that chart, but didn't really get moving. We saw just, a, I think it's this, this low volume that's really struggling um, to provide much momentum to the upside. But let's watch these levels in here in the chart. AMD is starting to show some improvement. Um, another chart you might want to be keeping an eye on is this tractor supply. And I mentioned this several times last week. With the rising food costs um, in the market, there is that possibility that we could see a kind of a resurgence of urban farming. And um, that's been kind of a catchy um, little place here recently um, that a lot of folks are going more to that, you know, grow your own as much as you can um, kind of attitude and particularly with prices rising as quickly as they are. And all of the stories about potential food shortages this summer um, may inspire that. So I've been watching this kind of closely. Now this could go either direction, breaking through that resistance, holding in there, has that potential that that could push through or it could break down. Can't really tell you which way it's going to go, but I am watching and waiting for it just in case it has that potential. You know, guys, um, we, we were talking about food and those kind of things. And I got to tell you, when you start looking at um, some of these ag related stocks, unbelievably strong. And that's that's really pointing to that possibility of um, some food problems here in the near future. And of course, it's also pointing to the rapidly rising inflation in the market and the possibility that the Fed will have to act more aggressively here soon. So watch those closely. I wouldn't want to chase them because they're so extended right now, but if they could provide a little rest or pullback in those um, in those charts and continue to follow along the trend. That's where I would want to be looking on those. And there's a lot of them. ADM, take a look at CF, um, all really strong. Other commodities like steel. Man, steel has been ripping to the upside. Keep an eye on that. Any rest or pullback may be an opportunity. Um, copper has been really strong. Alcoa caught a bit of a... Um, uh, I can't remember who it was that um, uh, Morgan Stanley or something like that downgraded them. But I got to tell you, uh, aluminum continuing to show lots and lots of strength. Of course, anything in the energy sector, when you take a look at energies, um, they have been quite strong and high possibility they could stay strong. There is some changing news in there where Russia is starting to sell 
um, its oil to India and possibly even China. That is relieving Brent crude prices just a little bit, but it's also spiking some more geopolitical tensions with those countries. So, uh, boy, I don't know. Um, tough situation that we're in right now in the market. So with that, guys, take a look at those charts. Take a look, look at all of those commodity areas. There's quite a few of those moving around. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Keep a close eye on this potential yield inversion. That could change everything if fear starts to creep up on that. So watch that closely. Everyone have an awesome day, and we'll see you right back here bright and early. Tuesday morning. Wish you all the best.